Ma'am, shall I allow all the participants? Yes, yes. I think we can start off with anything. Uh, Vijay Kumar sir, shall we start now? Uh, yes, Dr. Sandeep, and what do you say? Yes, sir. Uh, I request uh, Ruchita Madam uh, to start the session. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ms. Ruchita. Welcome you all for today's uh, webinar on geoinformatics technology and career opportunities organized by Symbiosis Institute of Geoinformatics. Before we proceed to session, I would like to introduce our Deputy Director of SIG, Dr. Vidya Patkar. Dr. Vidya Patkar is an Assistant Professor and Deputy Director at Symbiosis Institute of Geoinformatics. She has more than 17 years of research and teaching experience in the domain of programming, data mining, machine learning, data science, geoinformatics and geospatial technology. She has worked on various funded research projects at national level and presently she holds 10 plus publications in reputed and Year, review, reviewed, sorry, reviewed international and national conferences, books, chapters in the field of agriculture, special decision support system and geo-intelligence te uh, techniques. Her research interests are data science, machine learning, geospatial te uh, technologies, agroinformatics, and education data mining. I request Dr. Vidya Patkar to deliver welcome note for today's session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ruchita. Uh, on behalf of Symbiosis Institute of Geoinformatics, first of all, I would like to uh, wish all the participants and all the speakers and staffs and colleagues a very happy uh, National Science Day. Uh, and it is uh, our prestige or we feel uh, very uh, honored that we are celebrating this uh, science day, National Science Day with her latest, uh, we can say that the hot cake of the industry that is geospatial technology and special analytics uh, with the speakers from the industries, top industries, that is ESRI and Mr. Amitabh Singh, that is from Pure Maps. So uh, I would like to welcome 
our guests for our speakers for today's event, Mr. Vijay Kumar and Mr. Amrita for today's session. And I, I would like to hand over the session for the next Dr. Sandeepa. Welcome all the participants and the speakers. Over to you, Ruchita, madam. Thank you, ma'am, for the warm welcome note. Now, I would like to introduce our guest speaker of the program, Mr. Vijay Kumar. Mr. Vijay Kumar is the senior vice president and CTO at ISRI India, with more than 33 years of association with industry and academia. Mr. Vijay is uh, passionate in helping organizations solving business and social challenges using technologies, including mapping, remote sensing, special 2D and 3D analytic, uh, sorry, analytics, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data and real-time analytics. He has been instrumental in conceptualizing, designing, and implementing enterprise location platform across various industry sectors globally. He also helped large organizations in creating their organizational roadmap and location strategy. Mr. Vijay has been contributing to the advisory activity for various institutes, including IITs, NITs, IIRS, and active member at OGC India Forum. Such an, uh, such an eminent personality is with us today to share his experience and knowledge I welcome Mr. Vijay Kumar, sir, and hand over the session to him. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchita. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Sandeepan. And uh, thank you very much indeed. And thank you, Dr. Vidya. So uh, it's my pleasure to, you know, uh, you know, talk to the students, talk to various participants. And uh, in today's session, primarily, I intend to cover uh, some of the technology trends, you know, globally, what is happening in this technology, what are the new things, and what are the opportunities uh, for us, for career, you know, for different uh, students and different uh, domain people. I, I hope we can take the question in the, uh, in the last. Uh, so maybe you can, uh, the participants can probably send the questions as text or, you know, and then we can take the question in the last probably. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. All right. So uh, thank you. So, so, so in fact, I'll cover, you know, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, trends, I will also touch upon application areas. And then uh, I'll also give some insight of learning resources which all of you, uh, you know, uh, can look at and start using, you know, and uh, what are the career opportunities you'll discuss about that, you know, in India and abroad. So, uh, I understand, you know, uh, from Dr. Vidya and Dr. Sandeepan that there are different background of people, you know, there are people from GIS today, there are people from science background, arts background, and different background. So, I'll just cover actually fundamentally uh, high level. And uh, so GIS provides uh, a complete framework today, uh, starting from measurement and data management, uh, visualization and mapping, analysis and modeling, planning and design, decision making action. See, when we started, you know, GIS uh, two decades or three decades back, you know, it was mostly mapping. We are do we are doing mapping. We are doing you know uh, image processing also a little bit that time. But it, you know, it's matured quite a lot in the last one decade. And uh, it's covering end-to-end -end life cycle you know, of any business for, uh, process. I'll cover, touch upon you know, a couple of these uh, in my next slide. So now what is happening? You know, because uh, various advanced technologies are also integrating to GIS. Whether you talk about big data, you talk about uh, machine learning, AI, you talk about data science or imagery or, you know, various uh, different advanced technologies uh, are integrating to geospatial infrastructure today. So what is happening that geospatial or GIS technology is becoming capable to integrate and work in sync with all these advanced technologies. So this is actually a really a big boon for geospatial community, for all of us, because what is happening 
that uh, rather than getting into one area like say iot or you know uh, blockchain or ai machine learning if we get into geospatial technology then we can actually touch upon you know all these uh, advanced technologies or emerging technologies and you know work on all you know in, in sync with the geospatial technology which is a good actually you know uh, opportunity for all of us in fact for geospatial community and uh, as you know i mean uh, initially when we started gis or mapping we used to handle vector and raster right but today geospatial systems are able to manage you know, very well analyze store manage you know all sort of data sets whether it is lidar point cloud you know very well is terrain is imagery is there voxels are also there right uh, three dimensional pixels and vectors 3d you know and then you have unstructured data if you see unstructured is quite you know you have different kind of data sets and then you are doing a lot of data crunching and integrating to geospatial which is very very useful actually we have many useful business use cases for this then we have big data and iot and multi dimensional data so all this actually are integrating and geospatial system today are able to support and analyze all these data sets you know efficiently which is a good thing now one more you know uh, advancement happening in gis over the last uh, one decade probably i could say you know uh, gis is able to you know provide lots of dashboards pervasive dashboards right so what happened um, you know it's still today i have seen many government departments you know uh, let's say i am the government uh, department taking care of health health segment now i uh, reach to village taluka districts you know state every everywhere but it's still lots of my dashboards and and decision making happens you know on textual tables which is actually not adding value so today geospatial systems are easily able to geo enable you know all those dashboards and making it very pervasive and it's very easy actually you know uh, when i talk about it later and when you get into arcgis uh, you know uh, system it's very easy you don't need to get into a lot of deep programming you can achieve this very fast so it's becoming very very useful for all of us you know so gis today is you know we started with desktop now move to enterprise you know around uh, 10 years 15 years back then we have moved to cloud now which is a geospatial infrastructure so uh, we support you know uh, gis supports natively you know uh, all the cloud systems most of those and you know then it is embedded also for example let's say i'm using some different application different system but gis is embedded so it's actually you know quite uh, opening up it's opened up and you know get into the mainstream so which also gives additionally you know which also gives the additional uh, area of uh, study and learning or career opportunity in cloud which is also very very warm and picking up you know quite a lot in last couple of years if you see this uh, what are the gis capability you know in which area it is advancing as i mentioned earlier also so ai machine learning is becoming a buzzword and there is a large requirement also believe me lots of students are studying this but still there is a huge demand and gap in the industry we are still looking for you know uh, qualified people qualified guys skilled people in all these areas every company content special data science 3d visualization is, is also catching up and you have seen i think i don't know how many of you have heard uh, government of india having a program around creating you know 3d maps for the entire country major towns then you have data management field operations so field operations are also becoming you know geo enabled imagery and remote sensing application development real time visualization iot integration also is becoming very very easy now so when you talk about you know analytics right so i talked about that you know uh, initially we used to have lots of uh, tables and data crunching and graphs and all those all this capability has been bundled in gis system today you can do all this plus special analytics in gis so this become kind of a superset so what does it mean so this indicates that in coming years geospatial is going to take over completely all analytics market right you have lots of analytics tool but geospatial is going to take over and you know, become umbrella technology which is very exciting for this community now we special analysis in data science so i think i think some of you are already aware 
that today GIS actually is capable of doing lots of you know scientific modeling, predictive modeling, lots of especially statistics you can do today. And when you use deep learning and you know big data analytics, it make a lot of sense and you know a lot of value is coming out. So it becomes actually part and parcel. Now today, if you use, I mean, we have ArcGIS Pro, which is the latest you know, uh, software we have. It's all integrated. You don't need to get into AI machine learning separately. It's all integrated. You can do everything from there. So we have done all integration. We have adopted open source uh, toolkits and integrated all those. So you can, you can have various options actually within this. AI machine learning, deep learning framework, as I mentioned to you, if you see the right side, just take a note, open source data science ecosystem. If you see this circle on the right side. So see, I mean, this is, these are famous actually, you know, uh, ecosystem of frameworks which are integrated now with ArcGIS. So I need not to separately get into all this, but I can use and I can learn all this actually from ArcGIS, integrated view, which is very exciting. And I, 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 I advise you to go through this, you know, uh, uh, background a little more. You will really feel really, you know, great about it. It's quite easy to learn today. It's not very difficult. So um, imagery remote sensing has been a traditionally, you know, part of GIS, but today what, what is happening earlier, you know, G, uh, remote sensing uh, used to be a separate uh, domain and uh, GIS used to be a separate domain of software, but it is now integrated. Uh, GIS today, for example, is supporting all end-to-end -end image processing and remote sensing. Whether you talk about map and data production, we talk about image management, you talk about visualization, exploitation, analysis, you know, everything is integrated. So this is helping actually, you know, all of us, GIS community, to utilize all the capabilities from single platform, which is very helpful. Drone mapping, I think uh, all of us are aware, drones are really creating wonders now, right? And uh, GIS without drone actually processing, et cetera, is not complete. So it's, it's very well supported now. What, so and recently what happened, we have set up a complete cloud-based, uh, you know, uh, framework. If you see on the right side, it's called site scan, which is actually running on cloud, and you can do end-to-end -end process. You can fly a drone. You can you can you can design the flight path. You can capture data. You can process data. You can analyze. You can integrate. You can publish as a web service. So very very exciting actually. Then uh, an automated reality capture, you know, AR and VR. Uh, again, you know, this is coming up very well, and uh, it's, it's really giving a different experience to users. And people have started, you know, realizing value also. So this is also has come to the GIS. 3D GIS, as I already talked, right, is, is becoming uh, very uh, relevant to all of us, including AR, VR, and all those. Then I talked about IoT, real-time visualization. So, I mean, if you are interested to get into IoT, learn IoT, okay, you can get through geospatial, you can get through GIS, because you know what happened? IoT, when you have billions of sensors spread across the world or, or across the country, every sensor has a location. And when you do special analytics around that, it becomes really great. So, so, so this is becoming uh, quite useful, in fact, in many use cases. And we have complete, you know, today cloud-based platform every, everywhere you see that it's becoming so easy to use. Field operations, as I told you, is becoming quite easy now for the field guy, integrated with the backbone. So it's end-to-end, it's -end, you know, solution. So GIS, when you enter into GIS, it gives you an end-to-end, you know, experience. Handling mobile to cloud to desktop to workstations to you know uh, you know lots of graphic utilization happening. Then uh, you know if you are planning to have you know developer career, you want to get into development or application development or application creation solution creation. Then GIS today you know gives ready to use you know frameworks to develop the apps, pervasive apps. Whether you talk about app, you know web builder, experience builder, app studio. You can today you can develop mobile apps, as, you know, uh, which runs on multi-platform, very easy, and integrate with the backbone, right? Consuming web services, GI services, very very you know interesting and very useful in fact. So there are two paths actually. If you want to get into a you know no code low code approach, you see in the left side low code no code, then you can configure the apps very easily, and you can, you want to get into domain, right? You want to solve business problem, you can use this. If you're interested in hardcore programming, then you have APIs and SDK also available. 
you have Python API, you have web, web, JavaScript API, you have you know runtime SDKs, open source APIs integrate to this. So so it gives a versatile career actually opportunities. You know uh, you can you can choose whatever you want to or based on your interest. And platform are actually offering this. Now professional development. This is the important point actually. I I'll take a minute here. See what happened when we want to get into when we want to get into this career, right? We also need to have lots of learning resources. I mean, today, if you see YouTube and lots of other channels are there, you get lots of you know learning resources. But from GIS perspective also, what we have done, ISRI has done in last you know couple of years, we have started actually an open platform for everyone you know globally. You can get into MOOC program, you can get into Learn ArcGIS. Learn ArcGIS is a program you can register today. You can get free licenses, you can get free access, you can get thousands of lessons. You can do hands-on also. Very interesting. I, I recommend that you guys, you know, all of you should go get through this. Then web courses are there. Uh, thousands of courses are there which are available. And, you know, most of them are available actually freely to all, you know, all the people. You need to just register on ECD website and start using it for different roles. So uh, as I was talking about Learn ArcGIS Hub, so it's available for new user, for teachers also. There are lot of, lots of teaching resources for professors, for GIS professionals. If you're hardcore GIS professionals, there are very detailed technical you know, sessions. Data scientist, if you want to build a data science career or you, you are a student. So all the kind of resources are available you know, today. And when I, I'm talking about you know, different areas, you, know, you see you have basic things, getting started ArcGIS product you know around training data management training mapping training special analytics and data science trainings so you can select based on your choice or based on your interest and get into that path so lots of training courses available there is a path defined there is a certification also defined so it's very interesting actually now coming back to you know what are the career portion i'll touch upon this also so I think all of us, you know, are aware that government of India has come out with a very liberal policy, geospatial policy, you know, a year back, and now data is open. So this is a great step by government of India, right? And when is when we see lots of market reports, there is a big potential. Actually, people are predicting, you know, just for geospatial technology worldwide. Now, uh, you know, coming to the companies, you know, there are different kind of options available. Either we go with the private companies or we go with the government departments. Lots of government departments also, like we are working for mostly all the smart cities. We are working for different departments actually in the country. Everyone is looking for GIS experts. So there are lots of opportunities open for government, you know, uh, 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 government work. And there are lots of opportunity open for the private. And in India, private industry, if you see, I just categorize this into four, you know, five rows. So first is a hardcore GIS product companies like ISRI. We are there, Integraph, Autodesk. These are, you know, uh, primarily data products or, you know, uh, software product company. Then you have second layer, which are primarily Google, Microsoft, Oracle, you know, uh, uh, IBM, big product companies. So everyone has adopted GIS now. And all of, all of them are working in GIS. You have thousands of people working in GIS from Apple also in India today, or in Officer Center, in Google also, in Microsoft. I mean, lots of opportunity now in India and outside as well. Then we have you know, big IT companies, TCS, Infosys, Wipro, SCL, everyone. I think all, more, almost everyone. Everyone has opened GIS division and lots of opportunities. Believe me, today, even today, uh, you know, companies are not able to find good people. It's, it's difficult. Uh, you know, vacancies are open everywhere. Now you have GIS companies, Cyan, Genesis, Cybertech, RMSI, ISE. There are many other companies also, in fact. And then private end user organizations. Like utilities, let's say we have, you know, Geo, right? Airtel, Telecom, then utilities, Tata Power, Reliance, you know, insurance companies, everybody's using GIS. So everybody needs GIS experts. So you can get into a job based on, suppose you are interested in insurance. You will get a chance to, you know, work in insurance company also in GIS. You want to get into a retail, you can get a chance because most of the companies today are using GIS. It's a, it's a great, you know, opportunity and you have wider scope, in fact. Uh, you see this link actually, I think some of you might have seen, this is a survey done by one company some time back, this year only, and there are top 100 geospatial companies, you know, uh, in the world, this is a global uh, sheet, you can, you can refer this, you know, in your free time, so it's a, it's a big scope in fact, worldwide, 
when you talk about you know uh, research area research and education areas again there are big big scope and uh, you know start startup areas and you know i mean how startups are growing in the country we are targeting 150 unicorns by 2025 i was talking to a couple of startups last week and there are lots of startup coming up in space domain also you know geospatial technologies because it's adding a lot of value and we we will see in coming years we will see many startups actually you know which, which are reaching to the sky we have around in india we started a program for a startup we have around 70 plus startup whom we are actually guiding to enable geos geo enable their solutions which is very exciting from agriculture domain from retail domain from banking domain from transportation from different domains so it's very very interesting you know opportunity for all of us if you want to start your own you know uh, in uh, entrepreneurship now i'll just cover you know few things that gis as a career although we see that we have wider scope you know across the globe in different domain different technology area we'll touch upon very exciting right but i you know there are few things additionally you will get do you want to do something important right so gis is a green technology that is making difference on our planet right it's may really making difference we are touching climate we are touching weather we are touching disaster management we are touching every, you know almost all the critical areas so people every day we are touching people every day and key decisions about wildlife habitat human health renewable energy climate change water quality so i mean you will get a different satisfaction let's say you are working in water quality and you are able to improve water quality for the state for the country for the department you will feel a different level of satisfaction right it's important work you are making a difference do you want to empower people so gis actually empower people right is available across the platform it empower so lots of applications and solutions are implemented for citizens right so it empower people so you will get a different feeling different satisfaction do you care about the well-being of your local communities so today communities are actually participating collaborating around gis do you want to blaze new trails so so it's it's becoming so interesting right you want to do something new you want to innovate something you know some new solutions see there are thousands of problems right uh, we are facing as a society you want to pick up any problem and then work upon that and so give a solution using geospatial technology and data sets it becomes like very exciting actually so i said yeah, there is a link also given in, in the in the bottom you can go through this it has lots of other you know um, important uh, touch point about gis career so this is what uh, i thought to cover today in my brief uh, you know uh, talk we can take any question you know uh, now thank you sir for sharing such extensive knowledge dear participants now if you have any questions you can drop in the chat box so one of part, uh, a participant uh, want to ask is there any basic criteria for learn or gis no i think uh, there is no basic criteria you can in fact uh, uh, even if you don't know G anything in gis anything in gis even then you there is a, there are courses for you there so learn rgs actually is uh, designed for different kind of people non gis people gis people managers experts data science people so there is no criteria fixed criteria it is open for all i repeat participants can drop the questions in the chat box so i see the other one which country has the best opportunity in my experience every country i mean you can decide you want to work in any country you can decide today uh, based on my understanding when i talk to my uh, global you know friends and colleagues everybody is looking for good good gis guys in different domain so you can decide you have a choice to you know in this career you have a choice for the country then you have geoinformatics so geoinformatics is best for engineering of student which is good for scope in future okay so primarily you know uh, very, whether you call it geoinformatics you call it geomatics or you call it you know diff there are different courses you know different names right don't get into that i think see the course curriculum when you are touching in a course when you are touching advanced technologies see gis as i told you gis is not just mapping lots of advanced technology uh, touch you're talking iot you're talking ai machine learning you're talking analysis you're doing mobile so look at the course curriculum which is important whether university call it geoinformatics or geomatics or data science you know uh, so you 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 can go ahead
Okay, I I think all I talked about uh, opportunities in GIS as a career. But you, if you have any specific question, I think feel free. And then you have Sunil is asking which domain has most scope like developer or analytics. Okay, so I think uh, uh, scope is actually you know in both. It's up to us. For example, many of us we are not made for programming, and some of us are made for programming, right? Is it comes from inside? So it's up to you. But you have different you know opportunities in both the both the stream. If you want to get into programming, you want to be developer, you can get into that big scope. If you want to get into system administration, there is a big scope. If you want to get into cloud administration, big scope. If you want to get into analytics, big scope. So it's up to you. That's why I told you know that it gives you wider platform, wider choices. In developer, also you want to get into Python, you want to get into JavaScript API, you want to get into you know uh, normal C sharp. It's up to you. And lots of opportunities in different domain. I have experience ArcGIS desktop. Which should I learn next to improve my GIS skill? Okay, if you learn ArcGIS desktop, next step is that you should also get into advanced advanced areas. See, today as I mentioned, ArcGIS desktop, ArcGIS Pro, you can do a lot of deep learning, data science, machine learning, IoT today. From uh, from desktop, you can practice it. Right, get into certifications. Very important. Right, certifications will add your value, increase your market value. And today, I mean, I see you know a scope everywhere that uh, GIS skilled people, if they are actually multi skilled, they are even getting better you know salary than normal IT people. Many, many companies. I'm not saying all, but many companies. Best university to, in India to take masters in GIS. I think uh, I really appreciate you know symbiosis, uh, you know uh, uh, coming forward. And uh, when I was talking to Dr. Singh, you know, some time back. The course in data science, machine learning. I mean, uh, uh, Symbiosis is really coming forward and you know doing advanced uh, designing of the courses and offering the courses, you know, countrywide. But there are other other universities also. I suggest you have a look at it. Based on your choice, you can take a call. But there are ample opportunities and ample scope. What are the average salary as a fresher in India? I think salary varies, you know, from company to company. I mean, when you talk about this in India, I mean, we are offering uh, starting is uh, you know five five lakh. And then it 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 goes uh, based on different different you know, level, and many companies have different levels. When I apply for GIS, there is no many positions in India. Okay. So so I think I think that, uh, you need to uh, really explore that. There are so many opportunities. On the utility sector, power and utility. Okay. So uh, in utility sector, I mean almost all the power distribution company, all power transmission, all uh, renewable energy is happening on GIS. So GIS is contributing a lot. In this, we are we are also contributing to a solar uh, solar uh, you know system design you know worldwide globally not in India but worldwide also. You can do it online courses. Yes, you can do online courses. Online courses available. So so I think I think uh, I touched upon all the questions. But feel free to drop uh, later also if you get into uh, any question, and I'll be happy to answer that. But my suggestion: go through E3 website also, and then you will find lots of you know directions for the career. And feel free to uh, you know talk to us anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, Richita. Now we are moving towards the next session of the program. I would like to introduce next guest speaker of our program, Mr. Amitabh Singh. Mr. Amitabh Singh is a distinguished alumni of SIG. After completing his master's in geoinformatics, Mr. Amitabh had spent more than 15 years in geospatial domain. He had spent time in various verticals within geospatial industry covering database design, solution architecture, spatial analysis, and crowdsource data gathering and processing. With more than 20 five end-to-end -end projects and multiple industry certifications under his belt, namely PMP, CSM, CSPO, and LSSGB. He now focuses majorly on program management and academic give back. Such an illustrious personality is with us today to share his knowledge. Let's share his thoughts on career opportunities in your special domain. Uh, I welcome Mr. Amitabh uh, Singh, sir, and hand over the session to him. Please, sir. Thank you very much, Ruchita, for a warm welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Also, Dr. Das and uh, Dr. Vidya 
for an earlier introduction. Uh, I think Vijay has in detail captured many, many aspects of this domain. Uh, in, in a sense, my, uh, uh, my session would mostly be complementary to what, what Vijay has already shared. But there might be a content overlap because uh, in a sense, both of us belong to this same community of uh, geospatial uh, people. Um, I have only three points to discuss and only two slides, so it should not, I, I, I'm sure it should not take that uh, long. Uh, I wanted to take a couple of steps back and um, touch base on the first and foremost question, uh, what is GIS? You, you are seeing a definition on the screen right now, which is a, a very simplistic version. It's a spatial system that creates, manages, analyzes and maps uh, all the different type of data, more importantly, to unearth a few spatial relationships and patterns, uh, which are otherwise not available, ultimately helping us in decision making. Now you might have, uh, since you're a part of this webinar, I would assume that uh, at some point of time in your career, you might have seen either this or a, a similar version of this definition um, of GIS. I wanted to touch base on the second point, uh, which I mostly covered about the aspect of how um, uh, ISRI, a prominent player in the market, is uh, has, you know, is offering a lot of learning um, opportunities as well as uh, growth opportunities. I wanted to take a step back and then understand how the sector, especially, has changed in the last few years, especially in a decade, um, and. And not only the what are the changes, but then how and why these changes are resulting into uh, this domain, geospatial domain, uh, gaining very, very wider uh, importance. I wanted to look at that question uh, from four different lenses before coming down to the, the subject of this today's webinar uh, about the opportunities in this domain. The first lens which I wanted to stress upon is the what lens. From 60s and 70s, when we started, uh, uh, when the, the GIS as a domain started, uh, we have now moved towards an era of large volume data, the voluminous data, and that too in uh, diverse fields. When we started um, in 60s and 70s, the, the starting point was digitizing the topology or doing a manual survey on the field. While that has not really gone away completely, but then there's a huge shift what has happened we have seen the last uh, few years. Uh, why? Most important, then that that's the second lens. Why? I would say this is realization in the last 10 to 15 years that whatever happens, it happens somewhere. The word somewhere is the key out here. This signifies the importance of location and not only the location, but also uh, the technology attached to it. We have seen over the period of time that diverse field, uh, right from the local governance, defense, forestry, agriculture, real estate, health management, the recent example being pandemic, uh, supply chain, e-commerce, environmental, urban planning. There are literally uh, hundreds of domains where the importance of this, you know, everything happens somewhere is being realized. Once this realization happens, uh, two to three things principally happens. And that's where I shift to my third lens, which is about the how part of it. Uh, there are various ways of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, defining or uh, say delineating uh, the information which is available. I've chosen this way. Uh, the first sector being the data related sectors. Traditionally, the, uh, the data used to come by, by topo sheets, the survey maps, uh, either online or uh, on the ground and a few traditional ways of doing it. But over the period of time, we are seeing that uh, multiple technologies are generating data points without a, a human touch. That's really um, important. We, we have now data is being generated by vehicle sensors, uh, by crowdsourcing, by social media platform, by cell phones. A normal cell phone switch like this, which you and me carry, it has around eight to 11 different sensors which can generate continuous or sparsely uh, available data over the period of time. Uh, and when such an amount of magnanimous amount of data, I should rather say, is available, it requires an equally industrious technology to support. 
that's where the second sub lens comes into picture about the technology now we have uh, availability of not only the platforms the visualization pieces which i think he covered it very brilliantly in his in his last session uh, both the both the aspects but also the multiple uh, i'm sorry the uh, but also the processing speed has gone multi x with the very uh, easy to consume big data and ai ml uh, technology using the applications what are already available in the uh, uh, in the domain uh, usage of uh, all of these technology to make sense out of the data which is being generated it has uh, tremendously improved in the last 10 to 15 years after the data and the technology uh, the third piece which comes here is uh, the connecting the dots part aligning a problem uh, aligning us and finding out a solution now it's very much possible to pick a domain I, i talked about a few of the domain and you can browse through literally hundreds of domains which where this technology can be applied uh, for any of these domains it is very easy to uh, find an existing problem and once we have this problem the data and the technology can come together to find a, a good solution to it but in order to find a solution we require multiple roles out there i'll cover that about that more in our in, in the upcoming slide but before that let me quickly uh, touch base on the fourth uh, lens the fourth lens is essentially the who part so who is really using this geospatial uh, technology when i was researching uh, for today's session uh, i realized that the question is not really who is using it the question is who doesn't right from academicians uh, government industry and private citizens to up to superheroes and aliens if you have seen the movies of star wars or uh, avatar or any of the other um, uh, sci-fi movies you might have seen some application maybe weird Uh, uh which is getting implemented uh, uh you know belonging to this geospatial uh, technology domains jokes apart i think uh, uh the, the key message out here is in the last 10 to 15 years with the uh, in increase in the processing power uh, and the data generation capabilities as well as data processing and making sense kind of capabilities the entire uh, future of uh, this domain has been rewritten and and it is going definitely and definitely towards uh, it's an upward trend which is happening continuously let me go to my next and rather a last slide um, i was asked to talk about the the opportunities i in fact see it's not a opportunities but it's a sea of opportunities there are tons and tons of them uh, the the core principle which we need to understand is gis is a decision support system what what does principally that means there mostly would be a core domain and then there would be a geo special domain both the things coming uh, close to each other and then there there has to be some kind of an overlap when these kind of overlap exists a lot of good things come if you are a bsc agriculture if you are a bsc geology geography uh in, in one of the questions which was asked a few minutes ago uh, if i'm a civil engineer do i have any uh, aspect uh, any growth opportunities yes i i myself am a civil engineer out there if you have a btech or a bca or a bba basically whatever domain you belong from the good part is if you are retaining your knowledge of your core uh, domain and if you are learning a few good technologies from the geospatial domain this combination would really work uh, brilliantly you will be able to uh, find out some real time solutions to a lot of good problems uh, of the domain which you uh, you know uh, belong to and with that let me come to the last section of today's session uh, i'm trying to divide the the different opportunities which exist in this domain into three different uh, i would say that the same three uh pillars uh, starting with data moving to technology and finally connecting dots when i'm talking about data generators there are traditional producers i already talked about the surveying uh and and then digitization it is still happens in in um, in, in segments of the industry uh but over the period of last 10 15 years uh, automated sources like crowdsourcing uh, has really come up very very fast uh drone users uh, not only the usage of drone 
to collect the data, but the processing capability on drone or off drone, both of them, it has come up brilliantly. Uh, beyond community, I think it's a bring your own data community. If I'm traveling to, for example, say Pune with my GoPro cam uh, installed on my you know, helmet or the bike, and if I'm capturing some data, some information, uh, I can uh, have means to you know, uh, access or create some meaningful information out of this uh, simple bike ride and then offer this data point to somebody who is ready to make best use of it. So there are roles related with data generators. There are roles related with data processes, uh, beginning with ETL experts. When I say ETL experts, it's rather a huge concept uh, summarized into two words, it's extract, transform, and, transform and load. Uh, if there is an information available um, in, in, in some domain, how to extract that information in an automatic fashion, how to transform that in a language which my system can understand, and finally loading it into my own system for making best or meaningful use out of it. This, with, with the, with the uh, amount of data being generated every day, ETL experts are now playing a critical role. Not only the ETL experts, the GIS analysts as well, they are playing a critical role because that's where the, uh, in the previous slide, remember I was talking about uh, unearth a few spatial relationships. These spatial relationships are otherwise hidden in the mountain of data, but these GIS analysts are capable of dissecting that information and making meaningful information, extracting meaningful information out of it. Not only that, but then statisticians, database designers and integrators, I mean, not in as many words, but then these kind of different data processing roles would also exist. Moving to the second bar, what I have about technology, I'm again subdividing it to three different subsections of programmers, visualization experts, and researchers. When we are talking about uh, uh, developers, maybe uh, uh, Python, it can be SQL, it could be JavaScript, API, HTML, R. It could be variety of programming language which are required to, um, you know, the data which is captured in the, the previous segment into some meaningful, uh, either a dashboard, an application, a usage, or a product, or anything of the sorts. In order to do so, we require solution architects, which have capability of imagining how this entire solution would look like. Imagine the case of a Uber solution architect, when he or she is realizing that uh, Amitabh as a person wants to travel from Mumbai to Pune, then what all UI interfaces he might be interested to see on his cell phone. So uh, th those are the UI aspects of it. But then in order for that to happen, how the solution should be architected so that the ultimate end user can benefit from, a, uh, from it in a very easy to use fashion. Uh, I think big data, uh, AI and ML, uh, all the things uh, which I talked very briefly, so I'll rather skip and move on to the platform section. All of you might have seen the example of Amazon's, Flipkart, Mintras. Now these are platforms, which essentially means is, you know, uh, Amazon doesn't really manufacture a soap, but if I want to buy a purchase a soap for my house, I simply go and then find out all the options which are available. Likewise, here technologies as well is, is coming up with this concept of a platform where either you have a data or you want data, you simply log on to this platform and it becomes very, very simple for you to uh, globally find out, um, you know, uh, the different kind of uh, data which is available uh, for, for you to consume. It could be as simple as um, in this, the entire country of Singapore, if you want to determine uh, what all restaurants are available so that you can uh, create an application on top of it in order uh, for, for all the, you know, any specific use case catering to that uh, uh, restaurants, POIs, that kind of thing. So, so we, we definitely have those kind of opportunities. Uh, not only us, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, other organizations which are coming up with this uh, platform as a concept. Visualization expert, application designers, tool and flow designers. Let me take a, a step back and then mention how important this is. This, 
what you see on the uh, group right now, we are around 78 participants, including uh, all the speakers and the faculty members. The geospatial community, the people who actually design or create or connect the dots, it's rather a small segment. My father, who is not really, he knows anything uh, about geospatial as a technology, but then he's more sort of a banker because of his domain. Even he is capable of using an Ola or Uber app. This happens because of the brilliant uh, applications which are easy to consume, especially by the non-GIS people without really realizing that GIS is you know, working in the back end. And hence the visualization experts really play a critical role. These are the cases of use cases of the masses, but then we can also have industry specific use cases where either the dashboards or the web applications or the desktop applications can uh, uh, or integration with the uh, mobile application, it can really uh, change or, or rather resolve a problem of, uh, of that particular sector or uh, domain. Finally, researchers, uh, we all know that this entire domain has uh, uh, evolved massively in the 10 to 15 years. Still, I firmly believe what we are seeing right now is, uh, is you know a good depth of the surface only. It might still be the 10 or 15%. There's lots and lots of information which is yet to be unearthed. There are more um, use cases. There are more domains which are not even imagined at this point of time. And I'm sure uh, as you move forward, the researcher, uh, researchers uh, as well as the other contributors to this entire community will come to continue to evolve innovate and then finding out more uh, solutions to the new problem, new age problems. Finally, let me move to the, the last section, uh, business and leadership. Now, this is not really an often spoken about, um, I would say career opportunity, but uh, out of my personal experience, I would definitely say that when we are talking about massive amount of data, when we are talking about massive amount of technology, in principle, we are talking about multiple stakeholders. We are talking about all the data, technology, stakeholders coming together to make sense out of this entire piece. And hence, um, leadership and the business really plays a critical role. And hence, if you have uh, a title of, uh, I mean, uh, the, we, the industry as well needs, I should rather put it that way, uh, there's a, a demand of project managers, project leads, product managers, program managers, and all kind of managers who understand this domain geospatial, they have a fundamental understanding or understanding of a core domain or their subject matter experts. Uh, and then they can, uh, you know, touch base with different kind of uh, either the data or the technology related profiles uh, and work along with the business analyst uh, to, to deliver a meaningful solution. As you move up towards the ladder, when, when we have gained a significant, uh, I would say, uh, knowledge of the industry. Professional services consulting is also one of the domains where a GIS career can be architected. Finally, last but not the least, in fact, rather my favorite, capability development. LNT expert, when we say LNT, I mean, what I mean is learning and development expert. I just spoke a few minutes ago about how important it is to make this technology available for masses to consume, for masses to use. Still, we have uh, uh, only a, a handful of, I can re really count uh, the, the applications which are globally available and have using um, geospatial technology in such a way that people are consuming it without really using it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, without really realizing it, um, that there are very few of them. And hence these learning and development experts who can translate the technology and the use cases of these technologies to the masses, they really play uh, a critical role. So do hybrid SMEs. When I say hybrid SMEs, the subject matter experts, um, you know, again, I gave an example of, I can belong to um, uh, um, an operations management guy. I can be an operation management guy, or I can be a BSc agriculture. I can know about environment out of my passion or knowledge of it, or out of my, uh, uh, graduation or a post-graduation program done in it. I can belong to any of the domains, but these people, when they gather the knowledge of geospatial as a technology, they become a hybrid expert, which really, really can create 
uh, a significant difference. Last but not the least point, the uh, very reason all of us, we are here combined in a room uh, because of the people like Dr. Sandeepan, uh, Dr. Vidya, I have worked with them personally, and Dr. T.P. Singh, um, and many other distinguished, uh, distinguished faculties of uh, SIG. Faculties play a crucial role. Nowadays, the, the faculties have uh, the, the, you know, changed significantly the way it compared to be like two decades ago, where the age old curriculum will go on. These kind of academic institutes, not only SIG, but others as well uh, globally, they are creating a fine balance between, they are having a continuous touch base in, in, uh, about what's happening in industry and how that information can quickly be translated uh, and then shared with the uh, students so that when the students are completing their courses, their curriculums, they, they are uh, not only aware of their technology, but then they are readily consumable in the uh, um, in, in, in the organizations. So that, in my uh, opinion, uh, is, is kind of a, in a nutshell, different varieties of profiles which would exist for uh, uh, the sea of opportunities. Uh, I might have you know classified them into three different buckets, but then they, of course there are a lot of. Uh, I mean, they, they they have very porous borders, so they. Uh, they can really, one of the applications can touch the other and, and so on and so forth. So don't really get hung on to that, but the, the principal concept is uh, as the technology is moving forward, the processing power is moving forward, the visualization, the data generation is uh, turning automatic. It is becoming all the way uh, very easy and rather I should say uh, it's a very spread across kind of uh, flower of uh, technologies or uh, profiles rather, which are um, for, for everybody of us to pick up. Um, during today's call, we might be having a few people who are freshers who are probably students or a few people who are, um, they are already in this domain, they have traveled some distance and they are looking forward for the next leg of their career. Uh, definitely the, the call I would like to make to all of them is, this is one of the 21st century technology and investing your time in it is definitely going to reap uh, excellent benefits as you move forward. With that, uh, I would thank all of you for this opportunity. I'll invite if you have any questions, uh, Ruchita. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing such uh, deep knowledge. Uh, one of our participants uh, have a question, sir. You mentioned uh, data technology, uh, data technology and connecting dot. Uh, I would like to know which domain has more scope for uh, from career standpoint and having specialized skill. I would say when I was a student, one of the uh, principal questions which always bothered me, uh, I'm by the way, I'm a civil engineer uh, by graduation. Uh, I, I was always fearful of programming. And let me confess that I'm still fearful of programming. It doesn't come natural to me. The reason I'm saying, saying so is a few minutes ago, somebody asked this same question to, to Vijay and then uh, what he responded, I'm going to repeat in, in just a reworded format. You will have to determine what your passion is. That's the first point of start. That, that's the point where all of us should be starting. If you ask which domain has got more, uh, I would say um, money or growth or um, um, specialization opportunity, everything what is written on the uh, slide, it has all of those things available. Which of these will be readily consumable in the industry? All of them. It's only a matter of finding out first, what is your passion? Second, investing your time in, you know, uh, curating that particular skill. Third, finding out the organization which is catering to your own, uh, you know, uh, needs. And finally, joining them or reaching out to them for a, you know, uh, for a career out there. That should rather be the correct sequence uh, because uh, from, from growth perspective, each and almost all of these uh, uh, domains would have some, something or other to offer. So the uh, next question is, uh, special technologies will replace conventional surveying? 
we have not reached yet because uh, uh, while the industry keeps on talking about uh, the, there's a favorite buzzword called as automation uh, once the automation kicks in probably everything would be uh, you know the manual pieces would go away we have not reached yet we are moving towards it but i do not think uh, personally that the serving is going to go uh, any way uh, away in the next at least 5 to 10 years post that probably we might have availability of alternate means to to get the same information which is right now is available out of survey why do we do a survey in order to um, be aware of the ground reality right but if there are alternate technological means which can make uh, you know available this the same thing then we probably might not need a survey but then again uh, it, it's quite some time we are 5 uh, to 10 years at least away from from that time to happen So one of our participants uh, one point suggestion for a master students who can stand out in future in the geospatial domain very interesting question very very interesting question and whom sir has asked uh, let me thank you first for that uh, the the best way to learn about anything is pick up a problem which really bothers either you or or find out a problem with the help of either a faculty or a, a mentor or any of the industry expert which nowadays they are very much available uh, via linkedin even if you do not know anybody in person reach out to anybody i mean using any of these means pick a problem which really can um, make a difference to lives of people and go through the entire journey when i say journey the how i mean it starts from identifying the problem and ends at uh, you know uh, finding out the solution and this entire journey uh, as many times as you go through uh, your you, you will be closer to the 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 real life solution which industry or um, for for that matter anybody else demands right so make as much as experiences as possible and i'm sure you will be able to stand out even if it is a if even if it is sounding very uh, simplistic let me tell you um, not more than one or two out of 10 uh, people would do that thing they would still be uh, trying to find out some alternate ways of doing it and this is i'm talking about my experience for last 15 years uh, the suggestions are available for all but it's only handful of them who usually uh, pick up and then implement it on the ground so if you are quite an implementer you are already ahead of the curve but thanks for that question brilliant one Ruchita, you are mute. If you are speaking. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, next question is: Is science background student can get more opportunities than other uh, in this course? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Okay, sir. Is science background student can get more opportunities uh, than the others? I won't say so. Opportunities exist for all. there was a time when uh, it was limited to a few domains but then now is not that time i spoke about and i think vijay also touched base very beautifully on this thing if if i'm bsc agriculture if i'm uh, bba uh, geography geology i mean whatever domain you belong most important i mean simply google your own domain and then the geospatial applications related with it and you will be able to find plenty and plenty of applications which are there if there are applications that simply mean that somebody belonging to same domain ahead of you found a problem uh, belonging to your domain found a solution somewhere in in geospatial uh, industry and then married the two and hence those applications are possible it's only a matter of diving a uh, deep diving to determine what can be done it's it's like science doesn't really have an, an upper hand compared to other technologies other domains sorry it's it's equally possible but a good question yeah good to see that you're on mute i can't hear you yeah sir yep uh thank you so much sir 
uh, I think students have understood the session. Mm, uh, now I would like to request Dr. Sandeepan Das to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. First and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation to the speakers. Our first speaker, Mr. Vijay Kumar, gave an excellent talk on geospatial mapping and applications. He explained very beautifully the advanced technology which is being used, big data technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning techniques, drone mapping in agriculture in various domains. Currently, the 3D map 3D mapping for all the cities is proposed by the government of India. He explained the geospatial market potential and what are the different possible opportunities for all of all developers analysis and business analysis. He uh, gave the ESRI resource link where you can go through the link and download the different tutorials, go through it and complete the course. Our second speaker of the day, Mr. Amitabh Singh, delivered his talk on the topic GS technology and the careers prospect. He initiated with the overview of GIS technology. He explained very beautifully how the GIS has evolved over the period of years. The data captured by various sources from mobile, social media, and sensors are being processed by the voluminous data by artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques and the crowdsourcing techniques. He also explained the various opportunities which are available in different sectors, ranging from government and private sectors. I ex express my sincere gratitude to all the speakers for sharing their inspiring thoughts and giving their valuable time to the participants. I thank all the participants for active participation and their patience and making the event successful. All participants are requested to fill up the feedback form to get the certificate. The feedback form has been kept in the chat box. The certificate will be issued within next 15 working days. Now I declare that the session ends now and now participants can leave the meeting. I thank all the speakers and the participants. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Dr. Das. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Das. Thank you, Dr. Vidya. Bye-bye. Thank you.